things are looking pretty good. We're almost done blocking in the textures. After that, we'll move on to more detail. Before we do that though, there's one other type of material we need to add. I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna call this Glow. Now what this is going to be is certain parts of this creature's skin are going to glow a blue color. This will help them stand out against the background of deep space. So to do that, I'm not going to be using a smart material at all, so I'm just going to close this. I'll go to my brush tool, and I'll set it to a bright blue color. Now you'll see these small orbs embedded in the skin. We're going to paint those. So what I'll do is I'll set my stroke mode to, say, the second one. And we don't need to be painting depth information, but I am going to paint color and roughness. Now you'll see when I'm not using a smart material, I'll be painting using these parameters up here. So right now it's painting with no roughness and no metalness. This means that wherever I paint, if I can get a good angle on that with the light. Maybe I'll try up here for demonstration's sake. You'll see it's very, very shiny. That's because of the, the low roughness value. So I'll increase that to 100%. And then I can start painting in this area. Now because I'm painting over such a small space, I'm going to disable Steady Stroke, because as you see, as I drag my mouse around, I'm having a hard time filling in this region. So I'll turn that off, and now I have much more control. Not a whole lot to this, just painting in that area very carefully. But it doesn't really look like it's glowing. And that's because it's just being painted as a standard color. What we need to do is we need to change the blend mode of this layer from standard blend to use as emissive. You may see it brightened up a little bit there. If I increase the brightness of the color itself, maybe to more of a cyan, then you'll see that we can really start to make that shine. Unfortunately, I can't use symmetry because these marks are not quite symmetrical. Okay. Now, in addition to that, I want these areas in between the bone plates to also glow. So for that, I'll set my stroke mode to be one of the lassos. Set this to use non-B splines. Now one interesting thing I can do here is that I could hit enter and fill that in. Preferably I need to reduce my border width. But I want to be able to still capture this sculpted detail I have. So what I can do is I can go up here to my condition mask and change it to less in con cave. And you'll see now we get a little preview. And I can increase the degree of that and the contrast so that we still get a little bit of those details captured there. If that's not working, I can also do more on convex. But it looks like less on concave is what we really need. Something like that. And then I can hit enter. And you'll see we get a little bit more detail. Looks like I have a little bit of erasing work to do there, but that's okay. Okay, excellent. All right, there's, okay, there's one more area that I want to block in. And that's the underside. So I'm going to add it on a new layer. I'm going to call this one light skin. 
change the condition mask to still be always. And I'm just going to paint the underbelly of this guy a bit of a lighter gray color. Not too terribly light though. So there we go, we have that. I'll use a softer alpha and maybe turn on symmetry for this. See, I'm trying to follow these forms that I sculpted in. You can also hold down shift and that'll blur the paint, much like it would smooth out a, a sculpt. All right, now all of our main colors and layers have been blocked in. It is time to start concerning ourselves with the detail pass. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'll go back to my base skin layer. And we're going to break up the color of this a bit. The way we'll do that is still with the skin smart material active because we don't want to be messing with the roughness or that depth channel. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool or just pick a spot, preferably in an area where it's well exposed so the ambient occlusion map will not interfere with the color. I could also just turn the ambient occlusion map off and then pick that right there. So now we have the same color that we had originally started with. There we go, looks exactly the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this splattery alpha that comes in the default alpha pack with 3D coat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of the fact that this alpha will make use of the brush options. Specifically, I'm looking at the jitter hue, brightness, and saturation. I'm going to increase the jitter hue by a bit. That should be enough. And what I'm going to do is if I just draw, preferably with symmetry turned off, is that you'll see we start to get some very minor variations in the brightness, saturation, and hue like the options would suggest. And this just helps to break up the color a bit. I might reduce the jitter brightness and saturation, but increase the jitter hue. And maybe decrease the jitter position. So you see when I change the jitter hue, we're getting some areas that are slightly off colored. We're getting some pinks and a little bit of green in there. Just something to help break up the color a little bit. Which means I really didn't even need the smart material, but whatever. In fact, yeah, I'll just turn that off entirely. And then one thing I can do is if I hold down shift, I can blur that together so it doesn't look quite so splattered. Let me see if I can find an area where this will show up really well. Like maybe here on this wing. I'll decrease my smooth strength. Maybe increase it a bit. But hopefully you can see the individual dots of the splatter are not nearly as apparent. So the changes in color just look a little bit more gradual, a little bit more natural. Yeah, that was a mistake, I have to erase that later. Now down here you'll see that the uh, it's difficult to see the texture because of how dark it is. If I hit 2 on the keyboard, this will show us just the albedo map. That is to say only the color map. So we can see this without any lighting information applied to it whatsoever. Real skin has thousands of very small variations in color.
Okay, I'll hit five on my keyboard to bring us back to lit mode. And you can see, especially in the well-lit areas, things are already looking much more natural because of those subtle color variations.